Problem number eight. A report that many apples contain a cancer-causing preservative called ALAR, or ALAR, or ALAR. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, anyway, this report apparently had little effect on consumers. Few consumers plan to change their apple buying habits as a result of the report. Nonetheless, sales of apples in grocery stores fell sharply in March, a month after the report was issued. Which of the following, if true, best explains the reason for the apparent discrepancy described above? So what, uh, what this question is saying is that there's a bunch of people who read a report, and this report is supposed to make people not want to buy apples. But these people ended up saying, you know what? We're not going to change our apple buying habits. We're going to keep buying apples. So these people kept buying apples. But the sales of apples in grocery stores still fell in March. So why? Why, why? why did it keep falling in March even though people promised that they were going to keep buying apples? Okay, so let's look at the answer choices. A, in March, many grocers removed apples from their shelves in order to, to demonstrate concern about their customers' health. So this would be like um, a, a couple years ago when they had the salmonella outbreak, right? On the spinach, a bunch of people said, you know what, we're going to keep buying spinach. But stores said, you know what, we don't want our consumers to get salmonella and then sue us. So they did, They just slashed their stock of spinach so that people couldn't buy spinach. So I, I think A could possibly be the answer, right? Because A is saying that these grocers removed apples because of this report. So even though people wanted to still buy apples, they couldn't buy apples because the grocers removed them or diminished their stock or whatever. So A is possibly the right answer. But let's look at the other answer choices and, and come back to it. B says, because of a growing number of food safety warnings, consumers in March were indifferent to such warnings. Okay, so B is saying that, that people just kind of ignored the food safety warnings, which is part of the premise, right? In the, in the beginning, they said few consumers planned to change their apple buying habits as a result of the report. They say it here. So B is really just repeating what we already know. It doesn't really give us any additional information. C says, the report was delivered on television and also appeared in newspapers. I don't, it doesn't matter if it was in, in television or newspapers or on, on a website. It doesn't matter because, you know, it, it doesn't explain why sales still sh fell sharply. It's completely out of scope. Uh, D says, the report did not mention that any other fruit contains LR, although the, preserv the preservative is used on other fruit. So D, uh, it says that, you know, it's talking about fruit other than LR and, uh, or other fruit that contains LR, but all we care about are apples. So D is out of scope. E says public health officials did not believe that apples posed a health threat only because minute traces of LR were present in affected apples. What E does is E supports the sentence, few consumers plan to change their apple buying habits. Because, well, if there was no reason to fear this uh, cancer-causing preservative, then that's why consumers didn't want to change their buying habits. But remember that the question is saying, which of the following explains the discrepancy? So on that note, the only one that actually explains a discrepancy is going to be A. So A is going to be your correct answer. On to number nine. In order to reduce the number of items damaged while in transit to customers, packaging consultants recommended that the True Save mail order company increase the amount of packing material so as to fill any empty spaces in its cartons. Accordingly, Save True or True Save officials instructed the company's packers to use more packing material than before, and the packers zealously acted on these instructions and used as much as they could. Nevertheless, customer reports of damaged items rose somewhat. Which of the following, if true, helps most helps to explain why acting on the consultant's recommendation failed to achieve its goal? Ah, it's a fun little question because it talks about how these consultants were useless. That kind of sucks. Okay, so remember that the premise of this question is saying that usually if you don't pack a box full enough, 
And uh, I don't know if you guys use eBay or Half.com. I, I sell a lot of books online, so I definitely pack my my uh, envelope full of uh, bubble wrap. Anyway, they're saying if you don't pack it full enough, you're going to damage the goods. But if you pack it too full, apparently the reports of damaged goods rise even more. So there's even more damage. So why why is it that packing uh, the packages uh, with this protective material, why is it that having more of this protective material actually damages the product? And the answer is going to be one, uh, the answer is going to explain this discrepancy. A says, the change in packing policy led to an increase in expenditure of packing material and labor. What A is saying is that by packing everything more tightly, they increased the amount of money that they had to pay to buy the packing material and to pay people to pack the materials. So this is talking about money. We, it doesn't say anything about the, the damaged items or the rate of damage or any of that. So A is completely out of scope. B says, when packing material is compressed too densely, it loses some of its capacity to absorb shock. So when you have too much packing material, then the ability to absorb shock goes away. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever... Um, oh, that's a good example. I... When I was in high school, we had an ex we had a experiment where we had to put a we had to wrap an egg and then drop it from a second story uh, window, and then we would see who packed their egg uh, the best. And if your egg broke, then you failed the test. And if you if your egg survived, then you were good at packing the egg. What we found out was you wanted to pack everything loose because then the eggs can kind of be cushioned as it fell. Um, if your, if you just duct taped your egg all the way around so that it was completely tight and packed um, and you dropped it, the shock, I mean, it wouldn't absorb the shock, the egg would just crack on impact. Um, so wh when I see C, I think of that story and it reminds me that, um, or sorry, when I see B, it, re it reminds me of that story um, that if you compress it too densely, it's going to lose its capacity to absorb shock. Does it explain why the consultant's recommendation failed? Yeah, I think it does. So B is probably the right answer. Let's look at C. The amount of packing material used in a carton does not significantly influence the ease with which a cons with which a customer can unpack the package. So what C is saying is, is that the amount of packing material doesn't change how easy it is that a customer could unpack a package. I guess if the customer unpacked the package and had to use scissors and had to like tear open the package or something, they could damage the goods inside. But it, it doesn't say that it it doesn't decrease it. It just says it doesn't significantly influence. And we know that damaged goods went up somewhat. Uh, C is kind of a stretch. Could be the right answer, but it's sort of a stretch. D says, most of the goods that True Save ships are electronic products that are highly vulnerable to being damaged in transit. A lot of people look at D and they say, well, highly vulnerable. Well, that explains why everything got damaged. But you always have to remember the premise. You always want to remember what it is that this question is really asking. It, it's, it's asking, uh, if true, which most helps to explain, right? So... We need to not forget what the question is. D says that these products were highly vulnerable. Yeah, but remember that if TrueSafe ships electronic products, then they shipped it before and after the consultant's recommendation. It doesn't, it doesn't actually change anything in this question. Okay, E. TrueSave has lost some of its regular customers as a result of the high number of damaged items they received. So E is saying that, man, people just don't want to use TrueSave anymore because of all, all the damage. <laughs> Again, completely irrelevant. The question is saying, uh, why did the consultant's recommendation fail? Um, and E just explains why people don't use TrueSave anymore. So in the end, the right answer is going to be B. On to number 10, cable television spokesperson says, 
Subscriptions to cable television are a bargain in comparison to free television. Remember that free television is not really free. It is consumers in the end who pay for the costly advertising that supports free television. Ah. Uh, what an idiot. Okay. Which of the following, if true, is most damaging to the position of the cable television spokesperson? Well, what was his position? Well, his position is that, uh, well, cable television is better. It's a bargain compared to free television. You, uh, Because when you're watching free television and you see these commercials, you have to remember that these companies are paying a bunch of money uh, to marketing teams to create these commercials and to mark uh, to uh, uh, traffic them on the air and it results in markups in the prices because it all goes towards the marketing so when you're watching TV free TV you're actually just gonna pay for it later when you go to the supermarket Ah, interesting theory now he says he or she he says subscriptions to cable television are a bargain so how do we disprove this what can what will what can we use to say that this guy is full of it uh, I mean, cable television has commercials, right? I mean, what makes those commercials any different from commercials on free television? Anyway, A says, Consumers who do not own television sets are less likely to be influenced in their purchasing decisions by television advertising than are consumers who own television sets. Who cares if you own a television set or not? Completely irrelevant. B says, Subscriptions to cable television include access to some public television channels which do not accept advertising so B actually supports what this television spokesperson is saying because B says yeah when you when you subscribe to a t cable television channel or station or network um, you there are no commercials a lot of these channels don't have commercials so then you, I mean it's, it's you're not contributing to the markup uh, that you receive when you go to the supermarket C says, for locations with poor television reception, cable television provides picture quality superior. I'm just going to stop reading from here. This is talking about how great the picture quality is. Again, has nothing to do with damaging the position of the cable television spokesperson. <clears throat> D says, there is as much advertising on many cable television channels as there is on free television channels. So D is exactly what we said when we first looked at this question, right? Like, if cable has just as many channels or just as many uh, commercials as free television channels then this entire premise falls apart because the argument is saying that free television is not really free because of these commercials well then cable television is not really free either and if there are more channels on cable than there are on free television at least in America there is um, that means you're actually contributing more to the problem of the markup that you are actually uh, paying even more for costly advertising that supports free the free or cable television. So D is looks like it's the right answer. Let's get E. E says cable television subscribers can choose which channels they wish to receive and the fees. Well, I mean that certainly explains why cable television uh, might be more convenient. You know, you can pick and choose your channels and you can customize your package. So I mean he, he explains why cable television is convenient. But remember, they're saying in the premise, subscriptions are a bargain. They're not talking about ease of use. They're talking about cheap, saving money. And E doesn't really address that. So in the end, D is going to be the correct answer. All right. I am out of time, so I'll see you in the next video.